Again, I say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I proclaim, this is what I say, I will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray you'll join me with the same proclamation for your life. Good morning. Good morning. What a joy it is to be found in the Lord today. And we praise him because we know he woke us up this morning, started us on our way gave us a brand new day, thus we rejoice in it. As always, we greet you in that name that is above all names, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the reason that we are in the studio this morning. He is the reason, I believe, we even breathe. He is the reason that we are so excited about what we see God doing all around us. Welcome, welcome to the Growing by Going Radio Broadcast. I am Apostle Elmo Winners. I am your servant. That's the title of my life. And I'm joined this morning with my lovely wife, Lady Therese. Uh, we are rejoicing today that God has set this up, that we might be before you again, that you've invited us into your homes, into your workplace, into your lives and we do not take that lightly. So I say thank you again. We applaud you for being out there. For without you, I continue to say we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So thank you again. If you want to learn more about who we are, what we're doing, and what this broadcast is really all about, if you want to learn more about our book, Growing by Going, then we suggest that you Really take some time and go over to our upgraded website, www.kingdomgroup.co. And if you would like, we're also very much present in the social media realm. Uh, we encourage people to go to YouTube, link up there, and you can actually re-listen to the broadcast as well as the past broadcast, never miss a future broadcast. To do this, I suggest you go to youtube.com, subscribe to Kingdom Group, and receive your weekly updates. Every time we upload our broadcast, you will actually get a notification that it's there. So you can get it even if you miss it. Even if you're not available for the actual broadcast, you can still get it in your home. Now, we are also available uh, through Twitter. You can tweet with us, and uh, you can go to at Kingdom Group BR. Kingdom Group, or should I say at Kingdom Group BR. Check us out on Facebook. Some of you know that we're very active there as we're posting items every day, usually several times a day. So you can go to Kingdom Group International LLC or Growing by Going and stay up as to what's happening with us. Uh, we're being very active. I believe that's what the Word of God even tells us. I was re remembering that the Bible encouraged us to be very active by telling us, you know, faith without works is dead. It's meaningless. So God has caused us to have faith in him, to trust him, and to know that our steps are ordered by him. Thus, we are very active in the things of God. I want to take a few minutes today, as I did last week, and kind of review some things in our book. Sometimes uh, it's easy to lose sight on the reason why we're here. Some time ago, back in 2014, uh, we were invited on the air because of the book. We were interviewed by Dr. Moore, and as a result of that interview came this broadcast, Growing by Going. So <clears throat> I like to sometimes just go back, look at where we started, look at the uh, catalyst that got us going, and it was the book, Growing by Going. And we're still promoting this work. It is still available. You can still buy your copy by going on our website, going on uh, the uh, Facebook page, 
and uh, ordering it. It is still available, so we want you to do that. But I want to share some of the, uh, the things there, and what's important to me in all of my life is the Word of God. The Word of God is what uh, motivated us in writing this book, and I said us because I didn't write it. I need to make you understand it was the prompting and the moving of the Holy Ghost uh, that was there with me. Uh, he was a companion. He was the one that was telling me how to do it, when to do it, and so on. And we thank God so very much for that. We are not alone, folks. You all need to understand it is the power of God working through the Holy Spirit. So as we look at the book, to, this morning I'm really moved to consider the Great Commission. Now, we are moving up on Easter. Many of you know that tomorrow we will celebrate that great triumphant entry into Jerusalem by Jesus that we call uh, Palm Sunday. And next Sunday, we'll be celebrating uh, that great day for us as Christians, uh, Easter. What a wonderful time to be mindful of uh, the Great Commission and God's marching orders to every one of us. It is our duty to share with others what the Lord has done for us. So, I want to remind you today of what the Lord has given us in his word. Now, I love this area of scripture, and I must admit I was introduced to it back in the late 70s as I attended Union Baptist Seminary in New Orleans and learned about the commission that God had given to us and learned that it really was the Great Commission. And what really intrigued me was the fact that it was not given just one time, but the Great Commission was given to us in five distinct places in the Word of God. I could not even think about pinning a book on growing by going and being an effective witness without including uh, these five places. So if you have your book, I want you to follow with me because I'm just going to kind of repeat the scriptures, expound on them a bit so everybody will know what Jesus has said and continues to say to us in this hour. First of all, most people are very familiar with where it's given to us in the Gospel of Matthews, chapter number 28, verses 19 and 20. And the Word of God says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and then here is the assurance that we're never alone. He says, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus, as he was facing the cross, realized that the work he had begun must continue on, and it had to continue on through his disciples his followers. Thus, he specifically directed us, not just the 12 disciples, not just those in the upper room, not just the first church at Acts, but he, he directed all of us that we should, first word in the commission is go. Therefore, I continue to put it out there that we have to go in order to grow. Go in order to grow. We can't grow by staying. We have to go. So Jesus says, go, go ye therefore into the entire world and tell men, women, boys and girls what he has told us. I don't have to make anything up. I don't have to come up with my own plan. I just follow his plan. Go and share the gospel. Go and share the good news to those that sit in darkness, those that are bound by the enemy, those that have no hope. We are instructed to go. And I include with this going, just take God's word. Just take your testimony. Tell somebody what the Lord has done in your life. 
That's all he wants us to do. Follow the word of God. So Matthew's our first writer of the gospel included this actually in the last chapter, their last few verses, and wanted us to know this is the word of God instructions, marching orders from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it didn't just stop there because we see where Mark also provided us with a word from Jesus Christ along the same lines. And he said unto them, this is in Mark chapter 16, uh, verse number 15 and 16. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <clears throat> he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. A bit of a twist on the words, but the message is the same. Go, go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I don't know what happened, people. I don't know where we lost it. But the word is crystal clear that, yes, we should be preaching the gospel, but it is imperative that we move with the word of God. It was never meant to be stationary. God's word must travel and must move about. And when it does so, the word is what impacts people to come to Jesus Christ. I recall in the book of Acts when Peter stood and he ministered simply the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the workings of Jesus Christ. It moved people, convicted them, caused them to come and say, what must I do to be saved? That is the purpose of our going and preaching uh, the word of God. You've heard me talk about in the past. God has instructed us to build his kingdom, not our church. It is his church. He builds the church. He desires that we go out and preach the gospel and people's hearts will be pricked. The one that's bound by the enemy will have his eyes open to see there is a better life. There is a better way. And he will come and say, what must I do? Tell me, what is it that I really have to do right now to change my life? So Mark gives his version of the Great Commission. I need to continue on because I want to get into all five of them this morning before we run out of time. Over in the book of Luke, and if you don't have your book, you can follow this in the Bible. We're looking at Luke chapter 24 and verses 46 and 47. And all of the readings I'm doing this morning is from the King James Version, but you can use any version to follow us. What Luke says is this, and said unto them, that it is written, and that it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Okay, here we go. This is Luke's take on it. Yes, his words are different. He introduced, rather, two words here. We don't see any others. He talked about uh, repentance and remission of sins should be preached throughout the world, beginning at Jerusalem. It's imperative. Again, we understand this is all about going. He recounts what Christ did. He suffered at uh, Calvary for us. He died on that cross. He was buried in the tomb and rose the third day. Now with this information, this powerful gospel we have, this has to be taken forth and make people understand that you can be forgiven of your sins. Doesn't matter how bad your life has been. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't It does not matter where you've been and where you're from and so on. What's important here is that you understand Christ has died for you. And then this has to start, Luke says, in Jerusalem. That's where they were. That was the home base of the gospel, Jerusalem, home base of the church. I must just proclaim, I must 
emphasize to you that just the expression alone of beginning in Jerusalem implies it can't stay there. It has to move forward. Now, your Jerusalem is your local church, your local area, your local home, our neighborhood, our community. That's your Jerusalem. But it can't stay there. It is obvious that Christ wanted us to start wherever we are and move from that place. So beginning in Jerusalem, Luke says, this thing has to go out into all the world. We note three gospel writers said virtually the same thing, but they all have motivated or said in a manner to inspire us to move from where we are and go somewhere else. Not just be stationary, but this thing has to be mobile. I recall as I studied some years ago uh, in, in acquiring um, my master's, and I thank God for that, but we learned that no longer were we living in a world that was just local or statewide or even national. We live in a global society today. So we have to realize that our gospel can't stay local can't just stay in the community, can't stay in this state or this nation, but we must move globally with this gospel, which is so powerful, it will bring people to Christ. I can't even talk about this without relating to you how impacting it was to my life to see the gospel being heard by people of Russia through an interpreter and how it impacted their lives and where thousands upon thousands upon thousands gave their lives to Christ because they heard the gospel. It was not important, the vessel, but what was important was the message of the vessel that changed their lives. We started in Baton Rouge and we traveled thousands of miles to get to that place where people could hear the gospel. God it desires the same Thing of you. You don't have to go to Russia. You don't even have to go uh, out of the country, but you need to go somewhere. You need to get out of the church. You need to move from your comfort zone and go to a place where God will direct you. I continue on this recounting of the Great Commission, and we look this morning quickly at John, the fourth gospel writer there. He writes about this in John chapter number 20 verses 21 through 23. Now, again, I say every gospel writer had the instructions from Jesus Christ that I so often recall, uh, refer to as being the marching orders of Jesus Christ. And this is the way John wrote it. John says, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Here we go again. John says, Jesus said it again to his followers. That's all of us. He said, I'm going to give you power. And we'll hear that in the last uh, giving of the Great Commission. I'm going to give you power. That power is the Holy Ghost. He will empower you. And he will empower you to the point where you will be able to speak sins being remitted or sins being retained. That is the power that God has given to the witness. That's the power God has given to his army, his soldiers, that we might go forth and do what he's called us to do. While I'm on that subject, let me quickly go over to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. That's the last place that the Great Commission is given. And this is the one that has impressed my life the most. It continues uh, this teaching on the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. And for me, this has been the driving force, has been the most motivating 
of the five uh, great commissions given. Right here, the Lord Jesus says, and he spoke right in the upper room, and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, remember, starting in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. How powerful this word is. First of all, Jesus says we're going to receive power, not man-made power, power from upon high, glorious power, the power actually of God. Now think about this. We have the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have directions of Jesus Christ. Now we have been given through the Holy Ghost, the power of God to go and be a witness. That's the reason why we continue to promote that the book, the principles, if you'll use the word of God, you can be a most effective witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And people will come to Jesus Christ. That's a promise. That's a guarantee I make of to you this morning. If you will use the principles of this book, if you will use the gospel of Jesus Christ and work within the power of the Holy Ghost, People have to get saved. Lives have to change. Again, not your power, not your plans, not your ideas, not your scheming and all these things, simply the power of God. Now listen to what he says in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He says you will receive power when you receive the Holy Ghost. And folks, you need to understand the Holy Ghost comes at salvation. When you get saved, you got the power of God. We don't always live in that power. We don't always operate in that power. We don't always speak in that power. We don't even always think in that power. But you have the power of the Holy Ghost. And that power is given to us that we may witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And a witness is simply one who shares what he has seen, what he knows, what he's able to proclaim happen. I'm able to tell you about Jesus because I received him. He's in me. One day I was lost, but the Lord came into my life and now I'm found. One day I was totally blind, living in sin, but the Lord came into my life and opened my eyes. One day I operated thinking I was living, but I really was a dead man. And Jesus came into my life. And he saved me. And today I am alive. I'm living with the power of God. And note that the Lord said that we should go Jerusalem, go into Judea, go into Samaria, go into the uttermost parts of the world. The gospel of Jesus has to be mobile. It has to move. It does no good in the church. The same little handful of people week after week after week, and nobody is sharing anything about what God has done. That's the reason why you hear me say many things sometimes that sound like I'm anti-church, but I'm not. I am for the church. I am really thanking God for a church that is active, that is alive, that is powerful with the word of God. Our churches are supposed to be not just growing, but we're going to be multiplying. If you go back to the model set forth for us in Acts chapter 2, you see a church that was not dormant. You see a church that was not dead. You see a church that was alive, a church that was growing, a church that was doing things, actively involved in people's lives. That's what God has called us to do today in our world. So there you have it, folks. Not from my mouth, but from the word of God. And I will add to that, if we're not fulfilling the Great Commission, we are failing God. We're disobeying God. We are not doing what God has called us to do. Thus, it is imperative that we go forth and tell somebody what the Lord has done for us. Now, I pray that word has motivated you. I pray that word has caused you to come out the comfort zone, come out the closet, really. You know, come out the back room and go forth in our world and let somebody know you need Jesus Christ. You need him in your life today. 
He loves you. Again, get the book. Read this book. It's 106 pages long. It will take you every bit of a couple of hours, a few hours to read it, and just uh, get the principles that you might go for and be able to share what God's Word says. I love the first principle here that God gave us in the book, and I won't expound on it much today, but I believe if we will do this, if we will live this and not just quote it, our lives and others' lives will be changed. In the book, the first thing that we talk about is proclaiming the love of God, not with your lips, but with your lives. Live, John 3, 16. Stop just quoting it. Stop just knowing it or hide it, hide it, hide it in your heart and live, John 3, 16, and watch people, how they'll be attracted to you because of Jesus in your life. And remember, and I'm, I know I'm going off here, but I'm excited because of the fact that Jesus said, if he be lifted up from the earth, he will draw all men unto him. I don't have to do anything but lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. And that's what we do when we go out and we fulfill the Great Commission. I say amen this morning to the Word of God. And I want to share a few other things with you, and then I'm going to give somebody the opportunity to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week, I introduced on the air to you our new role uh, with the Christian Life magazine, and I want to just talk about that for a second. Our ministry, the Kingdom Group, is proud to be assisting this magazine with its distribution. I am a firm believer in what uh, Beth and Fred Townsend are doing with the Baton Rouge Christian Life magazine. Uh, we support it. Uh, we advertise in it. We write articles for it. And our goal is to get it out into the hands of as many people as possible. Not long ago, we initiated what we call Project 100. This is where the goal is to get the publication in at least 100 churches or ministries or houses of worship, I'm going to say by the end of April. I believe we can do this. We're already at the halfway mark. We can do this. And what I'm asking you to do is to, and you, my listeners, I'm asking you to uh, contact us. You can actually call me, 225-305-3006, or you can go to our website, and let us know you want the publication in your ministry. You want this magazine in your ministry. And if you do this within the next week, then we can assure you that the April publication will be at your ministry. Each month, listen at this, the mag features articles written by believers stories written about and by believers, and other items of interest to the Christian community. Not only that, but there are advertisers there that we believe will be a blessing to you. Many areas of, of, of life is covered. We want you to take a look at what we're doing. And this is offered to the public free. It's a free mag. And it's not something we're tricking you with to get it free and then we're going to start charging you. This is a free magazine. And it is free for it to be distributed at your ministry. What we're doing right now is seeking other believers who will allow us to just bring a bundle, a half bundle, a number of the copies to your location, place them there at the end of every month, and you just give them out to your church. A number of local bodies of believers are already doing this. We want you to be in that number. So to do that, call us again, 225-305-3006, or go to our website, do it today, do it as soon as you can, that you can start getting this publication very, very soon. Folks, I want to ask one question before we get off the air, and that is, if you die today, do you know for a fact you would go and be with the Lord Jesus Christ? If you're not sure you would, you can. This morning, I'm going to invite you to ask him into your heart. Ask him to save you today, and he'll do so wherever you are. Truly, if you believe that he is the Son of God, you believe that he died at Calvary, was buried in the tomb, and rose again, then he'll come into your heart and save you. 
Pray this prayer with me before we go off the air so somebody will have an opportunity to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Pray with me this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I understand I am not saved. I am sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. Dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I know you will never leave me. Thank you, God, for my new life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I pray you prayed that prayer. I pray you'll be with us in the coming week, and we will share with you where you can actually uh, go. I pray that next Saturday be with us, and that you'll be prepared for the Easter celebration at the church of your choice. In the meantime, if you prayed that prayer, get yourself a Bible. Start reading the Gospels, reading the Psalms, Proverbs today. Start praying and asking God to direct you. And until we see you again next week, we thank God for you, and we pray the blessing of God upon your life. Amen.